Do you remember the definitions from our first video on reliability? Reliability is the degree to which a measurement or test gives consistent results each time the experiment is performed. For example, Robin Hood is a reliable archer since his arrows consistently land close to each other. Meanwhile, Fluky Luke is not a reliable archer since his arrows go all over the place. Another key term is precision, which is a measure of how close the experimental results are to each other. If the results of an experiment are precise, then the experimental method is reliable. In this video, we will explore factors that affect the reliability of an experiment. Even if we have performed our experiment correctly, we might get slightly different results each time. This is due to random errors. A random error is an error that has variable size and direction. That is, random errors affect experiments in unpredictable ways. For example, let's consider Robin Hood. Even though Robin Hood consistently hits the bullseye, his arrow hits a slightly different spot each time. Each shot differs in direction and distance from the center of the target. We cannot predict exactly where his next arrow will hit because these differences are random. These slight variations in Robin Hood's shots are due to random errors. He is a reliable archer since the size of these random errors is very small. On the other hand, Fluky Luke demonstrates a very large random error. His arrows might hit above, below, or to the side of the target. He might hit close to the bullseye, or he might miss. Fluky Luke is so unpredictable that he cannot shoot consistently, so he is not a reliable archer. Let's revisit the example from the previous video on reliability. The aim of this experiment is to investigate the change in height of mung bean seedlings when grown in sunlight. You grow three mung bean seedlings on a thick bed of wet cotton wool in a petri dish for a period of seven days. Then they are left in an outdoor area where they are not covered by shadows. All seedlings have initial heights of 10 millimetres. After seven days, the final heights of the seedlings are measured using a wooden ruler. We can find the change in height of each seedling by subtracting its initial height from the final height. We can see that the changes in seedling height differ by a maximum of one millimetre over a seven-day period. Now we can judge the random error in our experimental measurements by comparing them to the resolution of our measuring instrument. The resolution of an instrument refers to how well the instrument can distinguish between two similar values. In this case, the wooden ruler measures length in increments of one millimetre, so it is quite accurate and has a high resolution. If you would like to revise this, please see our earlier video on accuracy in HSC biology skills. Since the variation in the change in height is similar to the increments of the wooden ruler, which is one millimetre, we can say that the random errors are small. Therefore, the results you recorded are reliable. In the following week, you decide to repeat the experiment and collect more data. You use the exact same equipment and method. However, you can't use the seedlings from last week as they've already grown taller. You need to ensure that the initial height of all seedlings remains constant, or the same, at 10 millimetres. This is because the rate of growth might be affected by how tall or old the plants are. In this case, the initial height of the plant is a controlled variable. We'll discuss this in our upcoming videos on validity in HSC biology skills. So, you pick three new mung bean seedlings and grow them in sunlight for seven days. Then, you obtain the following measurements. As we can see, the differences between these measurements are large, from three millimeters to eight millimeters. These differences are much larger than the increments of the wooden ruler. 
so these results have been affected by large, random errors. Therefore, the results collected in the second week are not reliable. Perhaps we should repeat the experiment again and collect new, more reliable measurements. So where does this random error come from? As the name implies, it is caused by variables that vary randomly between trials. In biology, there are three main sources of random errors. Environmental conditions, experimental factors, and intrinsic variability. Environmental conditions include variables such as temperature, atmospheric pressure, wind speed, humidity, and light intensity. Experimental factors are associated with the materials and apparatus used in the experiment, such as the masses and volumes of chemicals. It is also important to consider intrinsic variability. This refers to the inherent differences between samples, such as different locations in a rainforest, different organisms of the same species, and different cells within an organism. For example, let's consider a bag of potatoes. The size and age of each potato might be slightly different. So if we extract a one centimetre cube from each potato, then measure the amount of starch in each cube, we might find that some potatoes contain more starch than others. These differences can be attributed to genetic variation between each potato, with some potatoes having a genetic tendency to produce more starch. It could also be explained by the growth history of the potatoes. Some potato plants might have grown in more sunlight, while others grew in less. Intrinsic variation between samples is prevalent throughout biology, more so than in other sciences, such as chemistry and physics. Are you good friends with any identical twins? If so, you might have picked up on their differences. For example, one might be taller, while the other might be better at playing the guitar. And even though identical twins have the same DNA, they have different fingerprints. As we can see, intrinsic variability is a major source of random errors in biology. Let's return to the experiment involving mung bean seedlings. When we repeated the experiment on the second week, we observed large differences between the seedlings. But we used the same method and equipment, so why did these differences occur? Although we placed the seedlings outdoors in an uncovered area, each seedling may have received a different amount of sunlight during the seven days. For example, they might have been in direct sunlight in the morning, but as the day continued, the movement of the sun would have caused nearby shadows to move. This might have covered one of the seedlings, but not the others, causing its growth to slow down. In this case, changes in the environmental conditions might have introduced random errors. On a similar note, intrinsic differences in the genetic makeup of each mung bean seedling might have caused differences in height. The seedling which grew the tallest may have had a genetic tendency to grow faster over the seven-day period. So, even though we try to repeat experiments exactly the same each time, there might be minor changes in our experimental setup or conditions which can affect the final result. We'll discuss this in our upcoming videos on validity in HSC biology skills. Let's revise what we've discussed in this video. Reliability is the degree to which a measurement or test gives consistent results each time the experiment is performed. The reliability of an experimental procedure can be reduced by random errors. A random error is an error that has variable size and direction. Random errors are caused by variables that vary randomly between trials, including environmental conditions, experimental factors, and intrinsic variability. Intrinsic variability relates to the inherent differences between samples, such as between different organisms of the same species.
We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on biology, check out our third video on reliability.